Hello and welcome to Brain Injury Bites, where we provide help and advice for people after a brain injury. Hi, I'm Ashwani and I'm a trustee at Headway Warrington. I'm also a senior associate solicitor focusing on catastrophic injury, including brain injury. My name's Brooke and I've lived with a traumatic brain injury since 2007. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at um, fatigue and the importance of rest. So, Brooke, um, looking at um, how you were after the accident whilst you were in hospital and then even after your discharge home, um, I think it's fair to say that rest was a crucial part of your uh, post-brain injury recovery. Yeah, I suppose when you're you're resting, you're recovering and... um... You've got this. Well, I had this thing that I was going, to, that I was trying to rest as little as possible and get over this this need to rest in the day. And I would try and you know make myself stay awake as long as possible. But that's actually the worst thing you can do because it's um, it's not letting your body concentrate on recovering. Mm. And I guess that's why you're yeah, going back to a lot of people are induced into a coma, and that's the reason for that the, because. Um, your body can just do nothing but concentrate on healing your brain. Yeah, it's um yeah, I and mean, certainly when you're in hospital, you're given opportunity to rest. We talked about it in episode two and that fake environment, you have that structure, you have um plenty of opportunities to rest because your day is being managed um for you. Um but I guess it's more important um, when when someone's discharged home, for example, and they don't have that same structure to make sure that um, rest is um, a prominent feature in, in their routine and their recovery um, because regular rest is important to help your brain to heal. Um, and I think, you know, you, you just said that you were trying to do too much. It's a lot of it is about understanding that your body needs to rest, your brain needs to rest. Yeah, and accepting it. Yeah, yeah. You need to, you, you need to be a balance though. You can't rest too much and if you don't want to get into the habit of just doing nothing mm. and um, then you can't do too much either. You've got yeah. To, but then what, what the problem is, you need to that for that you need to organize your time and after a brain injury the very part of your body that organizes your time usually the frontal lobe of your brain has been damaged so it's um it's a bit of a nightmare trying to get that right yes yes organization and planning can be difficult and i guess how did you manage that did you did you look at um support from family and so on (laughs) not very well um (laughs) Coming up to the time when I was going to get discharged out of hospital, I thought I was going to be totally fine, but that, you know, that wasn't the case. I went home and I just, I wanted to just rest all the time. And um, then you would like, you rest for a bit, then you want to get up and you want to do something. Mm. Well, the thing is, there was no regularity to, it was very sporadic, my uh, getting up and laying down. And um, mm. I would just go through the day, like um, doing a bit with a bit of activity, then the rest then a bit of activity than the rest and um i wasn't like sufficiently tired by the time we'd gone to bed like sometimes i'd fall asleep at like six o'clock in the evening and sleep till seven and then obviously i couldn't sleep when i went to bed at night mm. i've suffered pretty badly and i still do you know what i still do with insomnia i just still don't sleep well, well and i think a lot of people have this um I remember there was a period when i was like i was staying at my sister's house and I was kind of scared of bedtime almost because it just it would mean just another night of just laying staring at the ceiling and then mm. getting up in the next day and and just being exhausted and then just you know resting too much in the day and it whole, the whole thing happened again and what you need to do is you need to just get regularity in your life even if it's every hour um have like five minutes an hour but then stick to that and mm. you know have some sort of a plan I remember I started at like a mid-morning rest and there was an afternoon rest and a mid-afternoon rest and then uh, bedtime at night. And then, you you know, eventually you get rid of the mid-morning rest, you get rid of the uh, mid-afternoon rest. So it was just like a rest in the middle of the day. Um, I used to go at 12 o'clock, um, but having, spe- having spoken to people, uh, other people who've had a brain injury, um, they have a better system of... I think the best time to go is about three o'clock mm. um, for for an hour or so, and then um, 
So that's not too early. So you've got, you know, too like a, a much of a long stretch be between the, the rest and bedtime when it's not too late either. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I guess it's probably different for different people but i think the key message there is to plan Reg in rest yeah, regularity and stick yeah. to it as well yeah. yeah yeah and also not doing too much i mean you mentioned that for example in the early days you would you would do something then rest then do something else then rest do something else and i guess without even trying too much you can become very fatigued just the first activity alone could really set yeah. off that fatigue um, that ruins kind of the rest of your day mm. so I, I suppose it's probably important to think about what your day is going to involve and if you if you're doing something in the morning then don't do anything else don't plan anything else in for yeah. the afternoon a good thing to do as well is um a good a good rule to stick to is anything cognitive um you generally you you you're brighter and sharper cogn you, your brain is better in the morning so yeah. anything 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 that involves thinking um so so i don't know in the early days you have like a lot of appointments maybe like a psychologist appointment and if it's possible to get that in in the morning um do anything like that in the morning and then um, anything physical i used to do in the afternoon mm -hmm. And um, there's planning your week as well. So say, say, say you have like two exercise days a week. Or, you know, ideally it would be three exercise. And um, and I'm not talking like running a marathon or anything. I'm talking like you know, if you go for a little walk or something, uh, going out getting some fresh air. Do that on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. You know, so you've got the the uh, the Tuesday and Thursdays recovery days, and don't, for instance, don't do it on a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because you'll just be exhausted. Mm. And um, same with cognitive things. Uh, if you can do it on the in the um, in the mornings, but don't, but try and like space them evenly evenly throughout the week. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, yeah, absolutely. It comes to planning, and I think it's what you've said there is a very um, good suggestion in terms of how to plan it in. Again, different people might find that, you know, some people might um, really struggle to get up in the mornings because of their fatigue. And so, um, you know, it, it's it's looking at how fatigue affects you and planning around that um, so that you're not taking on too much. Um, you're not doing too much cognitively and physically in one day and giving your brain the best possible chance um you talked about when when you were trying to do too much um i think am i right in thinking that you used to try and say yes to anything that anyone invited you to i had this thing that i was like it's that, what's it called fomo fear of missing out <laughs> and i had that on my massive fomo and i still do to a certain extent and um just anything that anything that i could go to and you want to be seen as having like, a, you know, have the, in your head, do you want to see that you have a good social life? Because obviously that's something that takes a massive knock after a head injury. Mm. And um, you want, you want, so any, any opportunity to went out, I did. And, um, but it's just, it was never any good because I was just exhausted. So I'd just be sat in the corner, just not, not really interacting with anyone. And then I would, you know, strike up a really boring conversation with someone because I didn't want to be there and I was just I just wanted them to go away and I wanted to go home and lie down hmm. but I've since learned that it's much better to be like a better version of yourself for a short period of time than it is you know exhausted version of yourself for, for a longer period of time mm, yeah no I think that's a that's a very profound advice there um and I mean, you know, your injury happened a long time ago, a but, long time ago now, yeah. but rest is still a feature for you, isn't it? Even now. It is. Yeah. I suppose that's a proof that brain injury never really goes away. It's something with you for, that's with you for life. I mean, somebody who was, something that I read when I was in hospital was a, do you remember Richard Hammond's book? He's, oh, yes. Um, yeah. And he claims to have been to be totally fine now, which I don't know if I believe, I don't know the doubt, but I mean, we had like similar kind of injuries uh, in that he was, we were both uh, a three on the Glasgow coma scale because he crashed in the jet car. Mm. But I suppose if you watch the footage back, the ambulance was straight there. So yeah, there's, there's going back to that golden hour where you have to be, yes. the treatment that you get in, you know, the, the, the hour, um, 
following your injury, mm. he, he was, was like, his golden hour was like seconds before yes. he got treatment. So The gold standard of the golden yeah, hour. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So he got the perfect um, system. But I don't know. I don't know if he is totally... Um, He's totally cured or not, he says he is, but... I guess we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, he, he has his TV persona, but we don't know yeah. what he's like when he's at home, whether he's, you know, sleeping all the time. Um, we just don't know, do we? Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that's... Fatigue was very much been in my life for a lot of years. Um, but for anybody who's going through it, you know, the early, early days now, it, you know, obviously it's really bad at first because... You've got to remember that's that's when your brain's healing as well, yeah, and yeah. Um, that's why you you know you do you do get a, a, a bit of a spurt in recovery at, at first, but it's continued to affect me through well throughout the last fifteen years. I mean, it still does now, but um, it's it is immensely better than what mm. it was, but um, it's still there. I think it's important not to fight it either, not to fight the fatigue. I know. Um, you had an incident, didn't you, where you, um, was it Red Bull? Oh, no, this thing, because you, you don't understand that at first. Like when I had my injury in 2007, there was, there was very little known about brain injury. Now there's much more and there's much, you know, it's had much more attention and much more media coverage. But essentially, we didn't really, we know, we, it was like a learning curve for us. And um, I just thought I was tired. I used to work in a bar. And we used to have Red Bull, so I just thought that was the answer to my fatigue problems. And I used to have to, I can't remember what my record was, but I used to, I used to have a lot of cans of Red Bull thinking that it would cure this fatigue. But all, all, all it did for me was it stopped me sleeping. Mm. And uh, there was a time I used to like uh, the band ACDC and uh, I got into it when we were traveling and they were playing in Manchester. And I actually went to an ACDC concert in I think it was 2009, a couple of years after my my injury, and um, I I had several cans of Red Bull after that, and uh, yeah, I don't think I slept the whole night. Oh, goodness, but, <laughs> it was good though. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, don't try this at home. You remember, you remember the best bits, don't you? But yeah, it's definitely definitely wasn't advisable. No, definitely not. Um, and you know, fatigue can also affect your judgment, can't it? If you're if your brain tired, we're not talking about physical tiredness. We're talking about brain tiredness. Um, then it can affect the way you think or the way you reason um, certain things. Um, I think there was something relatively recently, wasn't there, Brooke, um, Brooke with um, the Royal Mail? Just to prove that it still goes on. I mean, th yeah, the. The, the, the difference between physical fatigue and mental fatigue and the fatigue is actually what, what you talk of in brain injuries, like your mental fatigue, it's you just, you kind of just exhausted. Um, I got, oh, I've recently done like a big, like a, I run a marathon for charity and um, obviously we were, it, it's something that hit me just then and it was like, it was about 10 minutes after I crossed the finish line. So obviously I was absolutely exhausted and um, my, Defences were down. And I think I think I'm I'm good at spotting scams on your phone. You know, you get them all the time. Like you get phone calls from supposedly from Amazon. It's coming, you know, five hundred pounds coming out of your account. And press this button, and um, it was it was one from Royal Mail. It was a text message from Royal Mail asking me just to pay like a search like a tax. Uh, it was two pound ten, and it was um, happened just as I just as I crossed the finish line and looked at my phone. And I've had things, I've ordered things in the past, like from America, and you've had to like pay a little bit of extra tax. Mm. So I didn't really have time to sit and think about it. I just kind of assumed it was on them. And I thought I'll, I'll save my, some, myself some stress later and I'll pay it now. And I did it and I put my bank note details in and what have you. And um, then the next night, I actually got told to isolate the next day. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'd seen somebody at the, the race or whatever, but um, so I was, I was for my first day of isolation, and somebody had rung me and they said uh, they were from the Halifax um, anti-fraud team. And I thought, you know, usually I'd just say, make an excuse and just say I'm so tired. Uh, but I thought I'd better deal with this because it's on the Halifax anti-fraud team. And there was a guy um, who had obviously worked in customer service before mm. and he was just saying all the right things. And what he said to me was, are you getting um, messages from me on your phone um, from Halifax? And I was those were coming through 
like in real time. These messages were coming through as he was talking to me. I don't know whether this was planned or whether this was just pure potluck, but he said to me, have you noticed some strange payments going out of your account? And I have, I've got an internet shopping problem, me. So <laughs> especially in the pandemic, my Amazon bill's ridiculous. So I was, um, I said, I, I don't know. All sorts of my bank comes out of my bank account. And he says, well, have you, have you had something in the last couple of hours for £180? I was like, no, I definitely haven't. So what's that? Um, so he says, right, you've got to go to these text messages in your, your phone. Are you getting these text messages from uh, from Halifax? And they were coming through and I was getting them. And I just, and he says, you need to look at these and give me the numbers. So I just did that. Um, I, mean, I was exhausted and I just, I was just trying to get it done. So I just said to him, um, I gave him the numbers off like four of these text messages that have come through. And uh, so he says, yeah, come into the local branch Thursday morning. We'll sort it out for you after, you, after your isolation's over. And um, so I was like, okay, um, then said bye and then what have you. And then it was, I was watching TV that night and um, I, th- I kind of thought about it. And I thought, oh, I'll have a check at that. And I looked at these text messages and it actually says, do not share this number. Somebody is trying to steal your money. And my stomach oh, just no. dropped. And I just thought, oh my God, what an idiot. But I just, um, I didn't even look at that. I just looked straight for the number because obviously I was on the phone from someone from Halifax. Um, it was these, he knew about these messages. So I just thought, why would he really, you know, I didn't even enter my head to lie to him. And basically what they'd done is they'd taken £600 my account I mean, I only had 631 in it the last bill for the rest <laughs> of the month. And um, moved it to another account and then they've made a payment to um, another, this, I think it was this cyber currency. Stuff like that just scares me. So um, it was, it, it had gone to a, a website and I remember saying, saying to this lad, um, he said, you know, you'll have to contact this website. And I was thinking, can't you do it? And um he says, well, no, um, so he gave me, so there's no number, so he's given me a website, so no, he gave me an email address, sorry, so I wrote to this web email address, and to be fair, they got back to me within about an hour, and um, they said it couldn't, um, the funds had already been transferred to another another part, another place, and they can't get it back, so I rung, like, devastated, I rung back Halifax, he explained to me that um, he didn't know if the guess was kind of, kind of get any of this back. And he's like, well, I don't know, because um, because you authorised the payment. And that was it. I'm like, I did not authorise the payment. I authorised the payment of £2.10. I did not authorise yeah. payment of £610. And um, so, but luckily, um, well done to Halifax. They gave, me the, they gave me the money back, which I was very, very grateful for. But as I'm sure you can imagine, it was a very stressful time, yeah. especially when I was isolating. I was on my own for all this as well. So yeah, I just think... It, um when and i thought i was pretty clued up about these scams and stuff and i thought i was you know i thought they wouldn't be able to get me but it just proves that anyone's it hit me when i was just tired and uncomfortable and Mm. um yeah i mean these scams obviously are designed to to get people who who might be more vulnerable um he told me me, the guy told me the guy uh the bank told me that they probably sent ten thousand out and you know only if only one gets through which made me feel even worse because i'm the one person in ten thousand that's all for it (laughs) so you said obviously don't trust these sorts of um things and um you know check is there any other advice if 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 you could sort of advise yourself in that moment, would there be anything else that you might tell yourself? Don't do anything when you're tired and fatigued. Yeah, take a take a moment, take a step back. Um, so um, you talked about how you um, still need uh, rest now, but I think it's fair to say, isn't it, that you probably don't need as much or as often. Not as much. It has got yeah. better and it does get better for anyone. I think it doesn't... Um, you can you can do anything too much. Um, I think the, the trick is to do things in moderation. But, um, Absolutely. Yeah. Now it's um, I've done I've done things like I've done big runs and stuff. But um, and I've I've actually not been for rest in the day. But I think I think the reason for that is that I've the the adrenaline's carried me through. But mm-hmm. just on a general normal day, I try and go for like one rest in the in the middle of the day. Um, particularly if I've done something um, mentally taxing or. Mm-hmm you know, even physically taxing. 
and then, then I will need a rest off of that. But I try to, to you know, the, the, if it gets to like five o'clock, I wouldn't go any, dark, even four o'clock, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't rest past four o'clock because that tends to affect my sleep at night. Yeah, yeah. And it's important to get good quality sleep as well in the night. Um, so well, I keep telling myself, one day, one day <laughs> I'll laugh and like, but... <laughs> So in terms of tips that we can share with our audience then in relation to managing fatigue, um, we've talked about the importance of routine and sticking to it. Um, we've also talked about making plans, um, thinking ahead about your day. And, you know, if you, you're doing something that's cognitively taxing um, in the morning, then not to do anything else Um in terms of activity for the rest of the day or similarly if you're doing something physically taxing again thinking about um managing your activities um planning in rest accepting that you need you you need to rest i guess yeah. that's the hardest part when you're wanting to get up and go and do everything acceptance and, is a massive thing and to some, yeah. to some extent i still haven't accepted that i need to rest now uh, i still think i can do things that i can't but I think that's probably been a good and a bad thing. And a, and a good thing is, it's, you know, it's, it has push, made me push on, but then mm. um, in a bad thing, it's made me think that I'm better than I'm not and I, <laughs> yeah, get myself into trouble. But finding that balance, I guess, as you said before, you know, you don't want to over rest and then affect the quality of your sleep because you're just awake at night. I think, yeah, have, have yourself a cut off point. Mm. Um, I'd, say, I'd say four o'clock. Yeah, don't do any, don't. Don't yeah, sleep, don't, no, after, sleep after four o'clock. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good piece of advice. Have a cut off point. Don't have any caffeine after twelve o'clock. <laughs> Certainly not lots of cans of Red Bull. It's not not Red Red Bull, no. No, avoid uh, overstimulation, and it's what you said before. You know, do things in moderation. Think about your diet and your exercise, and do things in moderation. Yeah. Don't have too many stimulants. And I think, you know, you, you, what we said before about regular bedtime, probably also, would you agree, a regular waking up time? Yeah, and get up. Um, set yourself a routine in the morning as well. Consistency is key. Have your routine, stick to it, plan um, and rest. More importantly, make sure you allow yourself that time to, to rest and let your brain recover. Don't rest too much. Don't rest too little. Don't, um, don't rest too late. Definitely don't rest too late. <laughs> and uh, the worst thing to do in the morning as well, you know, if you think you're exhausted, get, get up. Don't just lay in bed because it just, it just makes you feel worse. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you uh, very much, um, Brooke. I think that was, again, a very insightful episode and lots of really helpful advice there for, for our listeners. Thanks for listening. Make sure you check the footnotes for more help, advice and resources. Join us for the next episode when we'll be talking about memory after brain injury.